Tyra Selden, welcome to The Write On Show, where we talk about your perspective on culture, writing, and literature. And I'm so happy today to have with me Ernestine Johnson and Jay Morrison. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Um, our topic for today is rebuilding our communities one block, one book, and one poem at a time. Awesome. Yeah. So I wanted you to share with our audience members a little bit of what brought you to Indianapolis, um, the street cor the corner classes, um, what was the impetus behind that, and why you chose such an unconventional method to go out and be in the streets and help to empower people? Well, so the corner class is our second year doing it. Okay. Uh, last year we kicked it off in February in Baltimore after a year of procrastinating mm -hmm. um, from the time I got the vision to do what uh, initially was thought of as hood hopping. Mm -hmm. One day I was in my condo in New Jersey and I was like, you know, talking to my, my protégés and I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to put a flip chart in the back of the truck. And we just went to different hoods and hopped out and taught real estate and taught financial literacy. And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's dope, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I laid back down on the couch, watched TV, and then we never did it. <laughs> and then a year later, I was like, you know what, what if I do that, that hood hopping thing? And I was like, you know, it's kind of cool to do a corner class. And so we coined it that way, and I was like, you know, I'm a big firm, you know, I'm a firm believer just trying and shooting your shot. And I don't know how it would turn out, how people would be receptive to it. So we did one in Baltimore. Um, just promote it through social media. So we're gonna be on this corner on, on Harlem Ave and Dolphin Ave on the west side of Baltimore this time. And like 70 people came out and the class was awesome. The energy was amazing. Everybody was like, yo, we ain't never seen nothing like this before. <laughs> and so then we went on to do, uh, we were on our Day With Jay tour last year. And so I started piggybacking our Day With Jay, Jay tour and doing corner classes in those cities prior to our Day With Jay events, which is like an all day boot camp with me. Okay. And um, had big success and then uh, ended the year in October with a 24 hour corner class mm -hmm. in, in Atlanta uh, on Lee and Abernathy where we did uh, 12 classes in 24 hour straight. So we got up at 6 a.m. and for a 24 hour marathon, we taught 12 classes. And, and then this year was like, yo, that corner class thing was going really, I felt like, I guess for me, after seeing, I think, one of our biggest classes last year in uh, Bankhead, Atlanta, where it was like almost 100 people out in the corner, uh, I was just thinking like, you know, I believe if you want to be legendary, you got to do some legendary-ish. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, I do want to offer as much of my talents and my gifts to the liberation of our people socially, politically, and economically. Mm -hmm. And I was like, one of the most impactful things I can do, we all can do panels, we can write books, we're going to talk about that, and <laughs> all things we're going to do, but I'm like, you know, something that we haven't done, and it's inspired by Malcolm, it's inspired by Jesus Christ, it's inspired by those who actually are amongst the people and in the streets. It's very easy for a leader or, or scholar or, or, or influencer to you know hold panels and conferences and all those kind of things, which are very, very important. But um, to be amongst the people and meet them where they are most comfortable, especially when we're trying to serve those least amongst us and serve a lot of our community that um, not necessarily just come from street corners, but for me, it was important to go back to the street corner and to the block because I got into real estate leaving the corner. I literally walked off the corner of 10th and Springfield in North New Jersey and got into real estate and had a lot of success. So I wanted to be able to get back to my fraternity, which were those who come from the streets or those who can relate or just meet our community. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be a fancy conference rooms or hotel lobbies. Just dress up. Yeah, dress up. <laughs> <laughs> come, as come as you are. are. <laughs> and really, so let's meet you in the corner. Let's pour love into you and financial literacy and everything else we can put to the table. And then so Jay started this tour last year and this year at the beginning of, was Atlanta your first class? That was the first class. So when I first met Jay, um, he told me at the corner class and I was like, oh, that's really cool. So he said, you should come out, you know, come check me out. I'm having a corner class in Atlanta. So I came and I'm expecting him just to have, I'm expecting it just to be a boring real estate class, to be honest. <laughs> okay. I'm like, let me just go out here and show support, but this is probably going to be really boring, whatever, I'll go. So I came and um, it was super, super, just, uh, it was amazing, it was powerful, and I was, in, I was in awe of really what he was doing. And he asked me, he said, you know, come get on the mic, come, come do some poetry for us. And um, I, I did a poem and the crowd has received it so well. And I, I, I well, did I asked her prior to the class to do some poetry for us. And she said she really didn't really commit to it. She okay. left I did it. He texted me. He said, "Are you gonna come?" I said, "Hey, I'm coming to your corner class. I'm gonna come check you out." And he okay. said, "Would love for you to say some words or do a poem." And I was like, "Yeah." I didn't even respond to the text. I okay. just showed up. So I had to fill it out first. Like, you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't just get me to come to the corner. I gotta see what it is first. So I came. I came to the corner, and I was like, I said, I was in awe. And I thought it was so beautiful, and it really just represented to me black love. It was more than just financial literacy. It was more than real estate. It was just really him loving on our people, and that's what. I was so attracted to and so I was like okay I'll do a poem so I did a poem and, and the crowd received it so well and Jay received it so well it was, just, it was such a good feeling and Jay said let's keep this going you just come on the rest of the tour with me so now we 
We're on tour together. We're, we're, city tour. we're two cities in. We're two cities, cities in cities together. In. Yeah. Wonderful. And thank you for that gift because obviously you're giving a gift and you're doing it in ways that um, for some of us we would not have access to it because we think education and we think learning, we think brick and mortar. Right. But instead of people having to come to us, we take the education and the learning to them. So thank you. Jay, I want to ask you about the solution, your most recent book. And I have a quote here that I want to share with you and I want you to expand upon. So at one point in the book, you said we can't worry about what others may think in order to focus on our own unity, justice, and repair. And it's that word repair in particular I want to isolate. Okay. When you wrote that, what did you have in mind? When I wrote that, I I, I, I come from such a eclectic of a background and so collective where I've you know I've been in the hood, I've been in poverty, I've been in prison. Mm -hmm. I've also worked for you know Fortune 500 type companies like Sotheby's, and mm -hmm. I've been on NBC, and I've done all these different things. And what I've noticed from meeting different types of Africans in America mm -hmm. is that when we're talking about our repair mm -hmm. and just doing for us, and how do we come together? How do we fix our own problems? Right. A lot of times we get bashful and kind of shy about. Mm -hmm talking about our issues or solving our issues because we don't want to offend a white person maybe mm -hmm. or we don't want to offend a corporate person or we don't want to offend a different kind of black person or whoever it might be. Whoever it might be. Yeah. We just don't focus on like, listen, our house is tore up. Mm. And, and, and as a people, I say, you know, many of our, most of our community is living in a burnt house mm. and our village is tore up and we're traumatized. And so it's like, we have to be intentional about our own repair and you can't do it well. Like first, I had, I had a really, he's still a really good friend of mine, um, Dave Brown, one of my clients. He started off with a client, I listed his $10 million house in Alpine, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we built this friendship and bond. He's a you know 50 plus year old white Jewish dude, mm -hmm. and we have two different, obviously, cultures and backgrounds. He knows my background, and I was very honest with him about how I got, you know, from the streets into real estate, and so we're playing table. But um, I noticed as I got more socially conscious, I was concerned about how I might, how Dave might take my Instagram post, mm. or how another friend of mine from another community might take my Instagram post or social post, or my perspective on Colin Kaepernick, or my perspective on just our repair and black mm. love, and that will hold you. Those, those kind of that, that mental burden and chains we put on ourselves, and as a community, sometimes it might even be like how another how another black person sees you in, in your. Because uh, sometimes we think, oh, he's too black, or oh, you're on that pro black <laughs> stuff. You're on that pro black. <laughs> right. They separate you like, oh, she's pro black. Right. <laughs> like, I'm so, supposed to be an anti black. Yeah, right, right. 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 <laughs> so it's like, yeah, like, shouldn't you be for your people? Like, like what, what, what Italian person you know ain't pro Italy? Or pro right. Italian? Like, what Polish person you know ain't pro Poland? Like, right. pro, you know, so, so, I, so I wrote that quote to say, in our repair, we gotta just like you guys be, you guys, you gotta strip it. Mm. You just gotta be all in, and it's not about being anti nobody else. Right. Being, being intentional about the repair of Africans in America and black people mm -hmm. does not mean you have to be intentional or even subliminal about hating or disliking or being anti anybody yeah, else. Man. We just focus on us. Mm -hmm. It ain't about you. Right. And, and, and that's the biggest thing is that we, we're, sometimes we're so sensitive about delivering our messages to our people because mm -hmm. we're worried about what everyone else is saying and it ain't about them. Mm -hmm. But once it's just about us and make mm -hmm. it just about us because mm -hmm. We were the ones who intentionally were demoralized, dehumanized, deculturalized, and everything else that we know. And still mass incarcerated, and still un unequally schooled, and everything else. So, mm -hmm. it's like, we, like, forget all of that. I'm not here to worry about your concerns or feelings for me. I'm here to, to really, on a mission to repair our people. Excellent. Yeah. Love it. Ernestine, you want to ask that at all? Did he capture it? Exactly. That's what he does. Yep, he captured it. This, okay. this, this is why I'm sitting right here next to him. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love the metaphor of the burning house, not because the house is burning, obviously, but because I think it really symbolizes the state of crisis that we're in. So one of the things that the solution does is provide us with solutions. So if there's a young person out there who's listening to this or who's watching this, and they're looking at UJ as an example. I won't even use the word role model because that has its own connotations, but if someone's looking at your story and they're thinking in terms of how you were able to change your life trajectory, what were some solutions that you use or that you drew from that position you to be in a position that you're in today? That's a really great question. Um, I think I drew from my life experiences and part of it for me was um, a challenge of myself was one of the bigger things. A lot of times we get, I, I say everybody has their own corner. Me, I left the physical corner because I was a drug dealer from 15 to 25 years old. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. So that's all I thought about every day with different ways to sell drugs and make money in the streets. Okay. And I never challenged myself to see what my talents and the gifts God gave me, my charisma, my swagger, mm -hmm. anything else, what that hustle could do in another industry. 
And so at 25 years old, when I challenged myself to say, not 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 part time, not like one foot in the streets, I'm gonna try this little thing out. But what happens if I put all my energy, the same way I put all my energy to working these phones and to taking these trips and doing everything I did in the the underworld, we call it. Um, what happens if I put that same energy into the corporate world? Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of results do I get? And, and was I, and I challenge myself, to, and, I, and I say it often, I ask myself literally, Jay, are you a drug dealer or are you a hustler? Because mm -hmm. if you're a drug dealer, you'll only sell drugs. Mm -hmm. A hustler can hustle anything. And so it kind of hurt my pride to think of myself as only a drug dealer. I'm just not no drug dealer. Like, <laughs> man, I'm just doing this because, you know what I mean? It, it works. I can go do anything. And so when I really hopped into real estate as a, as a mortgage professional, as a, as a landlord, as a property owner, as a, as a, a realtor. Mm -hmm. At the time, I went full steam in. And it didn't happen overnight, right. but I started to see that, you know what, oh, I could do well here. Okay. And I, I started doing well. And that was kind of, I think, one of, and that opened the doors in my, my eyes up to like, when I see my name on a deed, oh. and then when I see my, you know, my first thirteen thousand check, my first thirty thousand mm. dollar check, my first ninety thousand mm. dollar check, when I start seeing these successes, and even just my first business cards, and, and and seeing how my mom and family respond, my first seminar, my first home buyer workshop, just diving in, even before the money came in, um, it just said to me like, oh, sky's the limit. All you gotta do is just outwork the work, just put in the work, and and, 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 and be intentional about it. And that's kind of, I guess, what I would take or encourage anyone to draw from is that um, the possibilities, and I use my story, not so much inspiration, but like you said, just uh, as an example, like the possibilities are endless no matter what your start is. Mm -hmm. But you just have to be intentional and put the work in and get to that wherever it is you're trying to go. Okay, great. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, and when sure we come time. back, we're going to talk to them specifically about the writing process and some of their projects. Welcome back to the Ride On Show. My guests are Ernestine Johnson, Mr. Jay Morrison. And hello. Just, hello. If you're just joining us, we're talking about all of the wonderful things that these two are doing out in the community. And Ernestine, I want to leave this segment um, with a question for you. Um, you're a prolific poet. Thank you. Change agent, community activist. And I had a chance to see you on Arsenio Hall yes. show, which was phenomenal. So Thank if you, you have not seen that, make sure you Google Ernestine Johnson, Arsenio Hall show to see a clip of that. Um, you at one point said, and I'm going to again quote you, this is from Instagram, okay. give you a chance to kind of expand upon it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, no, it's a great quote. It's a great quote. And I think, you know, as, as one black woman, <laughs> no, it's a good quote, to another black woman, it's something that I think is important for other women and young girls to Absolutely. hear. Absolutely. Okay? So you said, what's the price of the sole of your shoe when it's your sole you have to barter? And I thought that was so profound. Thank you. Can you kind of explain that a little bit for our viewers? So... When I moved, I moved from Las Vegas. I moved. I was born and raised in LA. Okay. I went to college in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. From Las Vegas, I went to Atlanta. In LA, I grew up with you know a lot of wholesome people around me. Just mm -hmm. genuine, just good souls. I didn't. I wasn't really exposed to anything else outside of what I knew of my high school friends and my family. And then moving to Vegas, where you're on the Las Vegas Strip, where mm -hmm. everything from A to Z goes on. I was exposed to so much: mm -hmm. drugs, prostitution, mm -hmm. pimps, escorting. Then to move from there, from that atmosphere, to move to Atlanta, to working in, in Linux Mall, where you see the same thing. <laughs> and um, I, I was just so amazed how women literally sell their souls for, for material items, and that's what that poem is about. And it, 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 it was shocking. Mm -hmm. It was shocking to see women holding red bottoms or, or just any type of these designers on such a high pedestal before they help themselves, how they give themselves so freely mm -hmm. for something that you can't keep. Mm -hmm something that's not you know it's not gaining wealth it's not teaching you anything mm -hmm. it's, it's something you can't keep it's material just objects and that's what that poem was about so if there were a young lady who were listening to this and who you know heard those words and heard your explanation for it, so often there's peer pressure mm -hmm. and then obviously social media and has its implications Absolutely. in terms of how we see ourselves as women what would you say to that young girl who is struggling with that, who, who wants to be independent, who wants to be her own self, mm -hmm. but then there are all these other mitigating factors and external factors that are pushing her to conform or to be like everybody else? That's a great question, and I was that girl. Mm. I was that girl growing up. I always okay. wanted to be somebody else. Mm. I, I never thought I was good enough, never thought I was deserving, never thought I was worthy enough, never thought I was pretty enough, never thought I was smart enough. And the answer finally to me is where I, I and really I'm just coming into this moment at 30, 30 okay. years old, I'm finally realizing it's all about self-love. 
when you love you 100% and you commit to loving you and pouring into you 100%, all that other stuff can come. I can buy my own red bottoms. I can buy my own Chanel bag now. I can go on a vacation right now and fund it myself. Mm -hmm. And it's because I 100% love me. Love me enough to educate myself. Love me enough to use my talents and use my gifts and really know who I am as a queen. And when you walk in that and you walk in that power, you attract what you want. Mm -hmm. So really it's about getting to know you. 100% loving on you. And Jay and I talk about this all the time. Pouring into you. What is it that you do every day to pour into you? Is it working out? Is it reading? Is it taking a class? Is it learning a new instrument? I mean, just is it reading the Bible? Every day, be intentional about pouring into you. And that's when you're your best self. And that's when you can operate your highest level and your highest frequency. When you're there, all the other stuff will come. You see how pretty you are. You see how beautiful you are. You see how worthy you are. How deserving you are. How, how adequate you are. How valuable you are when you 100% pour into you. I love it. I Absolutely. hope all the young ladies and older women out there because and older women, right? right. Make this Again, I didn't walk right. into this power right. until 2930. Right. 29 is when I really started figuring out. Even when I did Arsenio and had millions of people and hits and views and right. people wanted me to speak here and here and here, I still didn't feel good enough. Mm. I still didn't feel worthy. And I'm on news channels and right. I'm doing all type I'm on Fox and I'm mm. doing all these 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 platforms and I still didn't feel good enough. Mm. You know what I mean? So right. when you when you're when you're tired, when you're tired of not feeling good enough and you're tired of not feeling worthy mm -hmm. enough, you'll get it. True. You have to be tired. Mm -hmm. You have to be tired of waking up and just not feeling like you're at your 100 percent best self. Right. When you when that clicks for you mm -hmm. as a woman, oh my god. <laughs> or, or you need things or people to in order to uh, to contribute to your worth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we need, we need items or you need people. You need items and people. When you, when you realize you don't need that, when it, when you realize it's you and you're all you got, mm -hmm. and if you just make that you the best version of you you can be, you will attract everything. You will attract the man you want. You will attract mm -hmm. the career you want. Mm -hmm. You will attract the shoes you want. Okay. You'll, you you know you'll have the knowledge to to make the money to to buy the shoes you right. want and the bag you want and the vacation you want and you have the energy to attract the man you want. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. have to pour 100% into yourself. Excellent, and thank you for that. It's phenomenal advice, and I think, again, young women, older women, we don't hear that enough. Mm -hmm. We look at the end result. You know, yeah. people may look at you like, oh, look at Ernestine, oh, yeah. right? But not understand Ernestine's story. You don't understand the right. story. Exactly, so by sharing that part of your story, I hope that it inspires and motivates someone yeah. to think, you know, this isn't about other people. It's not about social media. It's not about what I see. It's what's going on inside of me. Yeah, yeah. and especially this generation. I, I mentor a girl, she's 16, mm -hmm. and, and, and she's just so in awe of me sometimes. I'm just like, <laughs> you're so talented, and you're so this, and I'm just like, if you only knew what it took me to get here mm -hmm. and that's why I'm pouring into you so right. I can help you identify what yes. your gifts are yes. and your passions are so you can get here because you can get here Absolutely. I'm just getting here right and so it, it's important I and I suggest for young girls to have a mentor mm -hmm. I have a mentor and you know she's helped me in tremendous ways mentally mm -hmm. spiritually and emotionally right excellent and you're never too old for a mentor you're never too old for a mentor my mentor has a mentor right exactly yeah. he's like <laughs> fast to the mentor. next person right yeah. so speaking of pouring into people I'm going to shift gears slightly to talk about writing because you're a poet and then Jay you've written four books total correct Three. Three books total. Okay, I gave We're you an extra one. Yeah, right, four, so yeah. I'm, I'm planning to see yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what made both of you, because at different stages of your lives, decide to say, you know what, I'm going to write about my experiences. I'm going to share this in a way that it can be consumed or read or enjoyed by other people. Because there are a lot of people who have great ideas out there mm -hmm. and they have wonderful stories, but they don't take that next step in terms of actually writing them out right. and then sharing them with the public. So right. um, either one of you want to start? So for me, I know writing started when I was 10. Okay. So I kind of always know what I wanted to do since I was 10 years old. Okay. So I just remember being in class in fifth grade and I had to write a haiku. Mm -hmm. And like whoever wrote the best haiku got this pencil box and the pencil box had like stickers and all kind of cool stuff that I wanted. And I wanted to have that pencil box. So I had to go <laughs> home and I had to write the best haiku. And of course I couldn't just write mine out on regular paper. I like wrote it on construction paper and like the haiku was about the rain. Okay. So I made, the, I made the construction paper shaped like an umbrella. I had to go out. I had to win this pencil box. So I won this pencil box, but it was at that very moment in time where I realized I love creative writing. Mm, okay. And I, and this was an outlet for me. It was like a way I can express myself and people were actually going to listen. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started and then I moved on to do the Black Student Union in college. Mm -hmm. In the Black Student Union, we, all have, we always have poetry slams mm -hmm. and um, I, would, I would always get bored with the poetry. I was so bored with the other poets. I'm like, this, I'm like, the cadence. I'm like, this is so boring. And I'm like, how can I get people to listen? So I said, you know what? I just want my poetry and my writing just to be raw and truthful so everyone in the room can just listen. And I, that's 
where that was birthed, just a raw, just truth telling style, style poetry that, that I that I do. And um, yeah, I've kind of just always known like writing is it for me. Like writing is a great way for me to express myself and just let it out and, and help people. Okay, excellent. yeah. All right, Jay? Yeah, for, for me, early on through school, I realized I was a, a good writer as well, but mm -hmm. in how we grew up, it was all about sports or being a class clown or being popular, being cool, so writing was corny, right? So like, <laughs> I probably, the only good grade I got through all of like elementary and middle school actually was a, a reading and writing class where, and I only got that good grade because I got a D in um, one of the girls, probably the only black girl in my class at that time, uh, LaKay Walker, she uh, she laughed at me for getting a D on the paper. And I was like, I can do better, I just don't care. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm gonna show you. And so the last marker period, I got an A in that class. Just, just to show you. <laughs> just, just to apply myself. Um, you know, I, I won a writing contest about my, one of my great-great-grandparents, uh, Prince Rogers, who was a, a New Jersey enslaved African, mm. who has a street named after him, and, and I won a contest. And then I remember in high school wanting to be the valedictorian for mm. my school and telling one of my older big homies, who was like, I was a freshman, he probably was a sophomore, he was a senior. He's like, oh, that's corny, you don't want to do that. I'm like, all right, I guess I don't want to do that then. <laughs> and so, so I never embraced it. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, probably the, the next time I embraced writing was in prison. Okay. And it was, um, you know, writing letters, passing time, really expressing myself, you really all the time to yourself. So like, I'm, I'm writing everybody and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just was really good at, at putting my words together. And uh, just fast forward to my book, my first book was Hip Hop to Homeowners. Mm -hmm. Um, how we built wealth in America. Again, it was just another way of expressing um, how we bridged the gap between, at that time, real estate and pop culture. Okay. I was trying to show us just some examples and trying to illustrate a lot of the knowledge that I've obtained over, at that point, probably eight years in the industry, uh, which today is 12 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then um, that book did you know, pretty well, but I really wasn't, I didn't really appreciate it still. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like, it was more just, I know that what I was saying to you earlier with your with your company and brand, I, I teach that one way to submit yourself, and this is a free game for anyone, mm -hmm. one way to submit yourself in any industry you're in is to write a book. Absolutely. Just by being an author, mm -hmm. people will take you more serious. Absolutely. You can honestly not know crap about crap. <laughs> but just because you say, oh yeah. I'm the author of crap on crap. I'm the author of crap on crap. Oh yeah, let's come speak at our conference. Like, so just the fact you took the time out and, and, and to put in your words or either ghostwriting your words, however you put it together, the fact that you are saying I'm an author mm -hmm. says a lot to a lot of people. America just looks at authors as you deserve to be in front of a microphone. You deserve to be in front of a microphone just because you're an author, right? And so my first book was more about just positioning myself in the real estate industry outside of the, the success I had as a developer and investor. I wasn't so much focused on my brand. Okay. And so Hip Hop to Homeowners was more about that. And when uh, I went on the Breakfast Club and other platforms, people just like loved it. I was giving the, the, the uh, digital copy away for free on my website. Okay. Um, and then as I got more serious about expressing myself, and I teach so much about developing real estate, investing in real estate, flipping homes, uh, you know, just all the creative financing strategies. Mm -hmm. But I've realized I never focus on an everyday homeowner. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's where my, my book, Lord of My Land, came in, Five Steps to Home Ownership. I want to write a book that was a simple guide, like my fullest brain dump mm -hmm. on what the person who just wants to buy their first house mm -hmm. or second, you know, or just right. buy a property the right way, mm -hmm. what they have to do. So we, we wrote that book, um, Five Steps to Home Ownership, Lord of My Land, just to, just as my contribution, just to, Society okay. and to our people, just like yo, if you ever want to buy a house, five steps. Here you go. Here's, right. here's where you start, right? And then at the same time, so that I had started that book for a while, just never really finished it. And then um, I was working on a solution mentally in my head for a while, and I was just procrastinating. I think just writing just gets so intimidating because you gotta. For me, it's like I gotta stop everything I'm doing to write. Right. I, like right. so, I like being so busy. <laughs> and. Um, I would tell everybody my my solution ideology, right? Okay. My solution ideology is is is, is birthed or extended from Malcolm X's ideology of us fighting our political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. Okay. So Malcolm gave us that diagnosis in his speech to ballot or the bullet, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to write an antidote mm -hmm. to that diagnosis. He gave us a cure to that diagnosis, right. and that's where the book all stemmed from. Okay. Because I've always put on my developer's hat, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's developing real estate, developing people, or developing our community. And so if we already know what the issues are, right? right? We all elaborate on the problem. Right. Well, how the hell do we get to the, 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 the fix, the right. solution, right? To our unity, our justice, and our affair. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I finally just committed to it last year. Uh, I think it was like September maybe, or, or, or maybe August. Okay. And I just turned both my phones off. I told <laughs> nobody don't bother me. Right. And I literally locked in for 48 hours. I watched about 
10 hours of Malcolm videos mm -hmm. on YouTube, took a lot of notes, mm -hmm. and then I just dove in. I literally wrote that, that book in two days. I was, I was just calculating. I'm like, that is two days, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. so That's I, amazing. I literally wrote the That's book, amazing. thank you. I literally wrote the yeah. book in two days. Uh, we had to edit it up, and then we, we, we dropped Lord of My Land and The Solution, both books at the same time, the same okay. day, the same month, okay. October of last year. Both were bestsellers in a week. Excellent, wonderful. So, um, you both wear lots of different hats, yes. right? So, of those different hats, if you had to think in terms of what is next for you in terms of the writing, like ideally, what would your next book or your next poem or your next piece look like and why? Um, that's a good one. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> I already know. It's been on my heart for so long again. Okay. Uh, Don't two... give away the title though until you have a copyright. Like I'm firm yeah. on that, giving away titles. Okay, yeah, go that's ahead. fine. <laughs> but but there, there's two that I have two books I have to do. Okay. Um one is I and it's probably gonna be like in our J. Marsh Academy textbook. I need to do uh, everything I know about real estate books. Mm. I have so much information and it's all in bits and pieces and a lot of videos and it's in our textbook, but I want to expand on it. And I really just want to write a, write a I won't give the title away, but basically, uh, <laughs> but basically like, 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 like the perfect real estate book. Okay. Right? Like a, Fair a, enough. A, a great, a great guy to everything, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to do that and I got to like, because I, I think for books for me, in regards to a legacy piece is that, just to be completely honest, is as an influencer, as an up and coming leader, mm -hmm. you know, I get all the inboxes, the tweets, and I just know how history works. The more influential, the more power, the more, Whatever you get as a black man in America, the more um, you have to be aware of the forces against you. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's why I kind of did buckle down and write the solution. Because I was like, you know, if something were to happen to me, mm -hmm. I want to at least be able to leave my people with the blueprint as God and the vision he gave to me. Right. So it's not like, oh yeah, Jay Marson was cool. Like, you know, like we love Malcolm, we love Martin. We see a lot of how people, you know, our, our leaders on the walls. And, and, and some did leave behind, you know, portions of, of, of a blueprint or solution. Right. but. For me, I, I didn't want to be a leader or influencer where you love what I stood for, but you didn't really know where I was taking us. Mm, okay. And so the solution book is really a hand guide for us to actually follow. We're implementing the Black Vote Day. We're implementing the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. We're implementing you know, our, our, our unity play, our human mm. rights play. Our, oh, we have an amazing, which I'll love to be a part of, uh, social and economic repair curriculum we're building for our people. Okay. So everything in the book we're actually living. It's just not talking rhetoric. It's actually, right. we're actually living it. So. Um, so my, my all in all real estate book I want to do, and I have to do a book on my life story. Yes. I have to write actually the, the ins and outs of like the, the Jay Morrison story. Like, you know, just, I break down, I pull out little pieces of it, some of my books, I make, I personalize them, mm -hmm. but I really want to give just a full biography of, uh, of my life. So those are the two that I want to give to. Okay, and Ernestine, what's next for you writing wise? Um, well, Jay actually, um, Help me start my poetry book. Oh, wonderful! In every class we go to, and e even like the last two years, really, like people are like, "Where's your poetry book? I want right. this. I want this poem in uh -huh. a book." So um, that's actually almost already finished. Okay. And my girlfriends and I are working on a children's line of books. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, um, okay. with black characters and black faces. Because I'm just like, when I was growing up, I wanted to be the white girl mm. because that's all I saw in right. movies and books, mm -hmm. everything like. Jesus is white, Superman, right. Superwoman, I mean Wonder Woman, everyone's white. So right. it's like we didn't have, I didn't have the images that looked like me to make me feel pretty, make me feel beautiful and good right. enough. So my girlfriends and I are working on a children's book. And um, <laughs> Jay always says that, um, well Jay and I had this conversation a lot about, <laughs> no, I, I want to write an autobiography. Okay. Because what I've done my entire career, just in my life really, like I've been very um, elusive and I, mm. I I don't like people to know too much about me. And okay. I think there's, it creates this, I don't know, it's like, I always call it the Beyonce effect. Like mm. you don't really know much mm. about Beyonce unless you put it in a song. True. And that's how I am. Like okay. I, I put it in a poem, I put it in my work. Mm -hmm. Other than that, people don't know much, but okay. I have... I have a lot of lot of layers and layers and layers to my story, so I, I definitely eventually want to write autobiography. Not right now though. Okay. So maybe in a few years or so. Yeah, I think like maybe when I'm 35. Okay. So yeah. about five years. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, like about five more years. Five years. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> That's the magical number for right. women, trust me. Okay. Yeah. So on that note, we're gonna take a break. Yeah. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk more to Ernestine and Jay. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, this is Dr. Tyra. Welcome back to the Ride On Show, where my guests are Ernestine Johnson and Jay Morrison. And if you're just now joining us, we're talking about all the wonderful things they do in the community to help to empower our people. I want you two to share with us a little bit about what's next for you in terms of events that you're working on or projects. Um, so, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, outside of 
what I do with Jay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an actress and a producer as well. Um, I produced, part, co-producer on a, on a film and lead actress in a film um, with DC Young Flying Emmanuel Hudson that I want everybody to watch. It's on the Urban Movie Channel, um, the UNC, UMC app, you can get that. Um, it's my first lead in a feature film, so that's, thank you, and that's airing now, and it'll also be airing on BET all of October. Oh, okay. And my girlfriends and I produced a show. What's the name of the film? Oh, Digital Lives Matter. I thought I said that. No. Yeah. So yes, it's a movie called Digital Hashtag Digital Lives Matter, starring Steve Johnson and myself, mm -hmm. DC Young Fly, Manuel Hudson, Nav Green, a bunch of funny um, social media characters and comedians. Really, really funny. It's great. And I also produced a show called Besties that hopefully we will be able to um, give to the world soon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like a spinoff of Girlfriends and Sex in the City mix. It calms something healthy for us to watch, okay. and um, yeah. So, can we talk about those two different hats? Um, so, acting and producing. So, for you, did you were you acting first, and then decided I want to get on the other side? Like, how did that play out? Definitely for you? was acting first. Started okay. acting when I was ten. Um, mm -hmm. Did a bunch of WB shows back in the nineties, uh -huh. and just as I got older, I realized you really have to produce. Mm -hmm. You can't wait. And my okay. whole thing is create, don't wait. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna produce my own stuff, produce okay. my own content, mm -hmm. and uh, you can't you can't wait for anyone to say, here's the role, mm -hmm. here's the role, here's the role, because you get told no every day. So I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm connected with a group of girls in Atlanta. We all produce direct act. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? We need to start our own business okay. and we need to produce our own stuff so we don't have to wait on anybody. Excellent. So I just started wearing the producer hat about four years ago. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Right. You're producing vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> Are we breaking news on the show? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. All right. So Jay Water. I mean, there's so much. I don't even know where to tell you to start. Oh, but <laughs> uh, you know what? I do want to go back to one of the questions you asked earlier. Sure. Just say this because it's proper. Um, part of the inspiration for my, my transformation, a large part of it was mm -hmm. my spiritual alignment. Okay. It was um, just me evolving spiritually in my mm -hmm. relationship with God and understanding my purpose. And that helped me walk into the man I am today coming mm -hmm. from where I came from. So like, I don't ever want to leave that out. Thank there was a, a lot of what I did and challenging myself and all that, but it also was just tapping into that, that little voice, that inner voice in my head that knew there was greater good for me to do. Mm -hmm. And what I call using my superpowers for good. Mm -hmm. But you could be a mastermind and use that to go destroy your community. Mm -hmm. Or you could be a mastermind and go out and go rebuild your community. That's so true. that was a large part of it. Um, in regards to upcoming projects, uh, I mean, the biggest for me, I think, uh, there's a lot going on. It's hard to say what's the biggest, but <laughs> the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, yeah, I, I, I am share. super excited yeah, about. So for share. the last two years, I've been doing the research and gathering this mastermind team around me of financial experts, mm -hmm. real estate experts, hedge fund experts, mm -hmm. legal experts, and we're launching the first ever real estate crowdfund, not for non-accredited and accredited investors, 100% owned and operated by us and for us. Um, this is how we can stop the uh, gentrification of our communities. Mm -hmm. It's a real estate crowdfund where investors can invest as little as $500 in the fund, but all be owners in major real estate assets that we buy and develop together, such as hotels, hospitals, schools, farmland, mm -hmm. rows of houses, all that good stuff. And so on August 17th, we're officially launching the fund uh, on Marcus Garvey's birthday okay. in uh, Atlanta, Georgia at the Old DeKalb County Courthouse. Everyone can feel free to go to uh, blackwallstreetball.com. So we're having a ball to kind of inaugurate the fun. Mm -hmm. And so it's a black tie and black carpet event. Um, but again, it's just a time for us to break bread together, celebrate together, and fund our first real estate deal together. So we'll be unveiling what real estate project we're going to fund initially and just introducing the Tulsa team. And it's just an official launch for us. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we're working on a, a real estate based uh, reality show at this uh, currently. Also, Ernestine and I are working on some couples based kind of content and talk show and things as well. Um, I have a bunch of real estate, you know kind of developments and projects and kind of mm -hmm. things in the swing, but all kind of I'm tying into Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And then I'll probably say lastly is the Jay Morrison Academy. Mm -hmm. um, we're uh, just really excited about the work we've done in the community and educating people and getting them financially lit, financially literate, mm -hmm. and um, looking to expand the school in different cities. So right now we're, we're in Atlanta and we have our online campus, which mm -hmm. is done very well uh, by uh, thousands of students. Okay. But we want to, uh, bring in more trainers and really duplicate ourselves and our okay. school and have it into more actual high schools teaching financial literacy, okay. into colleges, and then other locations throughout cities for people to learn. Excellent. And where are you going next? What's the next city you're to? We're Milwaukee. in Milwaukee. 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 Milwaukee to Cleveland. We're on the Midwest swing right now. Okay. So, so dates, dates, dates. 
Oh, it's every Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, it's every Tuesday, whatever those dates are. So, okay. the so the next will be the 8th. Yes, yeah, so the next one will be the 8th. And then Cleveland the 15th. Yes. Okay. At 7, right? Okay. And then August 17th. No, 5 30, at 530. Oh, you know what? And then we're also, because um, it was right to do, and we want to do it. Mm -hmm. This weekend, we're going to Tulsa, Oklahoma this Saturday. Oh, so we're leaving yeah. Indianapolis. I have a speaking engagement in Baltimore, mm -hmm. going back to Atlanta. And then Saturday, we are going to Tulsa, Oklahoma to the Black Wall Street, original Black Wall Street community oh, wow. in Greenwood. And um, for those who don't know, you know, we named our fund Tulsa, Oklahoma in remembrance of the Black Wall Street community in Tulsa, Oklahoma that was bombed mm -hmm. uh, and was uh, one of the biggest cases of genocide on American soil by Americans. And so we're um, looking to revitalize and build Black Wall Street communities all throughout the country through our fund. And uh, so those are, you know, then we'll head over to, to, to Milwaukee and Cleveland and then our next cities. Okay, great. So my, my next question is um, kind of tying things together. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Either something that you've read or someone shared with you that really stuck that you think will be meaningful for other people to hear? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I can say best. Okay, or one but, of the best. One but of the best. something that always sticks with me um, was my acting coach told me a while ago. She said, to thine own self be true. Mm. And that, to me, it just, it always stuck with me because I remember times, like I said, growing up, always wanting to be something else and right. someone else and just not feeling good enough. But when, once I realized my gifts are so powerful and my, my individualism is so powerful, it's like, to thine own self be true. I already had the answers. Right. But I always went a different way because I didn't think well, my answer was good enough or mm -hmm. it was valid enough because I wasn't worthy enough. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just like, not nah, to my own self be true. Like, when I think about something, it's, it is what it is. It's mm -hmm. this way because this is what God designed me to do. It's like, right. and, he, and he lives in me and, mm -hmm. and my individualism and my, my uniqueness just speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. So I, to that own self be true. Don't let other people steer you off your path. Okay, excellent. Yeah, for me, I, th I think there's kind of two that stand out um one on a personal side was one of my mentors just told me like do what you do best mm. a lot of times we get distracted and want to do a little bit of everything right. that can excite us and he was like listen you know one time i had a, had a record label an entertainment company i was doing everything because i had the means to do it he's like look you're the real estate guy it's like you know it's cool to do other things you can do that i'm right. not saying don't expand but do what you do best like, right. you know, like, Specialization, like, yeah, right? like, yeah. like own it right mm -hmm. and then I think at 17 years old, I was um, hustling in Baltimore. I had a drug trafficking ring from New York, New Jersey, Baltimore to Lincoln, Nebraska at 17. Wow. And one of my uh, big homies in, in, in Baltimore, you know, he seen I had a Rolex watch at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, it's cool, you gotta watch. He said, you could buy all the cars and jewelry you want, but God ain't making no more land. Mm. And he was like, buy land. Mm -hmm. he said, you know, and then that, and that, that kind of was a seed of me being Mr. Real Estate. It was like, it always, and that made sense to me. I'm very logical. It was like, damn, God ain't making no more land. Like, <laughs> he always make a new land. Right. He's making make a new Rolex. But, mm -hmm. you know, so I say that to everyone. It's like, um, don't let the fear of home ownership, of land ownership, of apartment building ownership, of hotel ownership, don't make it too big for you. The only mm -hmm. thing that's missing is strategy, a little bit of knowledge base, mm -hmm. and some hustle. And so um, tying that in is that uh, we do have a free um, real estate investors crash course on okay. our, our website, jmorrisonacademy.com. Okay. So for any of your viewers, if they want to get an entry into real estate mm -hmm. without having to pay the Googles the big bucks, mm -hmm. we have a 30 minute free crash course at jmorrisonacademy.com. Okay. And so for our viewers that want to follow you, stay in, uh, connected with you, stay in contact, what's the best way? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, just shout out your, your content. Yes, go to my website, ernestinejohnson.com. You can leave me a personal note. Follow me on Instagram, ernestine.johnson, Twitter, E underscore on the scene. Or search the hashtag Young Betty. <laughs> or that, then there's that. Or search the hashtag Young Betty. There's me too. <laughs> And, and for me, we have a couple of sites, but um, I guess to make it easy, there's jmorrison.net, my direct personal site, and then there's our school site, as I mentioned, jmorrisonacademy.com. If anyone wants to call and see how they can get a free financial game plan, where they start in life to get their finances together, you can call our, call our company, call our school any day, 1-844-JOIN-JMA. And I'm on the gram too, I'm live streaming, I'm snapping, I'm hashtagging young Malcolm, but you can follow me at Mr. J. Morrison on Instagram and Twitter. and. Um, Feel free again to join our website, guys, and get the free content and join our email list for updates. Okay, great. Well, I just want to thank you on behalf of the Perspectives Network and thank the Ride On Show. Um, I admire you both for the work that you're doing and the fact that I think you're going to change the narrative as it relates to how we see ourselves and what it means to be successful, powerful, influential, right? Appreciate as that. opposed to detaching ourselves and being distant to actually be there, be in the trenches, mm -hmm. to tell our people that we love them. And they need to hear that. Sometimes we take that right. for granted, something as simple as, 
I love you, I care about you, I care about your circumstances can change someone's life. So right. thank you again for being my guest and a guest of The Right On Show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. So for those of you who are watching, again, we had Jay Morrison and Ernestine Johnson joining us today. I want to encourage you to continue to write on. I'm Dr. Tyra Selden. Until next time, thank you.